So it is um, Monday, February 22nd, 2012, and we're here in Taylor Barefoot's studio, we being Taylor himself, his friend Dave Fisher, who's going to be doing the videography, um, my friend John Parati, who um, helps me with basically all aspects of the craziness that is Klon, and myself, Bill Finnegan. And uh, we're here um, to basically do some ABCing with uh, these three pedals. Um, the one in the middle is the prototype of the KTR, the forthcoming version of the overdrive unit. Um, this is the prototype that I had at NAMM about a month ago. And you can see flank flanking it on either side are um, two original Centaur units. This silver one with, without uh, the Centaur figure um, was one that I made in 2007. Just happened to have kicking around. And this one right here, this so-called Horsey Man unit, is um, an original unit, I'm guessing, just from the serial number. It's probably 1998 or thereabouts. Um, I've moved several times since I started the business, and uh, stuff gets lost in the shuffle, you know, moving from one place to another. And uh, this is something that just got unearthed, uh, I guess, a week ago today when John and I were uh, bulldozing stuff around in my workroom, trying to make my workroom more of a workroom as opposed to a crazy-ass storage space. So we found this, um, fired it up, it sounds good, completely original unit. Um, I'll mention parenthetically that I will be giving this at some point in the not too distant future to my friend um, who's a single mom, maybe some of you know the story, she's a single mom and uh, needs a little financial help here and there. And so for a couple of years now anyway, I have been building her essentially new units but with old horsey man castings uh, that are left over from that period of production. And uh, this unit will be a little different. This is not a new unit, as I said, um, you know, built with an old casting. This is a unit that's, uh, at this point, probably 14, 15, 13 years old. And, um, you know, at some point when she needs it, I'll just give it to her and she'll sell it and, you know, it'll help her out. So uh, our setup here basically is this is uh, an ABC box um, that, uh, that I had made. And... Um, it is basically a four position rotary switch, and I'll explain why four as opposed to three in a second. Um, it's completely passive, it's not powered, there are no LEDs, there's nothing inside except for a big ass rotary switch with a bunch of uh, decks on it and, um, and just a coaxial cable that's all shielded for good, for good isolation and so on. And uh, the reason there are four positions is you have A, B, and C, and then this fourth position, the one it's in now, um, that's just an internally wired straight end out, uh, master end out, right on the switch itself. So that's why there aren't, uh, why there isn't a pair of, uh, of jacks. So here's the uh, bypass position. Here is uh, the C position pointing at these guys. Here's the B position pointing at this pair. Here's the A position pointing at these guys. So um, just regular old generic whirlwind um, one foot patch cables uh, nothing fancy at all straight plugs um, all three pedals are being powered by just regular old pedal power two um, and that's pretty much it so I think what we're going to do first is uh, I want to um, quickly give you a sense of the one new capability uh, that the that the KTR has that the Centaur never did have as, as many of you, I guess, are aware, the, uh, the Centaur was buffered output um, all the time. And uh, I, I, I really am a, uh, a strong believer in buffered output. I think that most of the time it gives you the truest representation of your original signal. Some people, however, uh, um, like true bypass. I'm not really a fan of it. But the new one does have a slide switch on the side, and you can switch back and forth uh, between buffered output and true bypass, uh, whichever you want, um, it does give you that capability, uh, and you know again a capability that the Centaur never had. So Taylor is just uh, he's he's got a Les Paul here, and he's just going to strum some chords. So here here uh, here is just the straight bypass on the ABC box. This is just um, essentially the two guitar cables, the one from uh, Taylor's guitar to the box, and then the one from the box to the amp with just a teeny little bit of internal wiring. And uh, so, so that's, you know, that's, that's what we're gonna get right now. Yep, and we're going into a two rock classic reverb, uh, 100 watt into a two rock cabinet with the uh, 65 watt speakers that, that they come with. We're going into um, two API mic preamps using an SM57 and a Royer R121. 
straight into Pro Tools, no no compression or anything in between. Cool. So here we are. Uh, this is just bypass on the box. All you're hearing is uh, guitar to box and box straight to amp. Okay, so here is uh, this Silver Centaur, exact same thing. And here is the KTR in buffered mode. And finally, this old Gold Centaur from the late 90s. So the only difference between the three of these as a group uh, and the bypass is obviously you've got a little bit of additional uh, cable capacitance because you've got two feet of cable um, that in this bypass position you don't have. But aside from that, you're, uh, you're pretty much right there. So now I'm going to go to the B position, which is the KTR. And um, I'm just going to flip back and forth between the buffered mode and the uh, true bypass mode, and uh, hopefully you guys can hear the difference. Okay, so this is buffered mode. We will probably uh, do that again a little later on with something with single coils, you know, a Strat or uh, Taylor's got a nice Linhoff Tele, so, uh, you know, obviously going to be more apparent, the difference is going to be more apparent with single coils as opposed to humbuckers. But um, the cab is uh, out, in the, out in the recording room, um, you know, we have the head in here, the Turok head, and we just went out there for a second, and even with the Les Paul, the difference is fairly apparent, so hopefully you guys will be able to hear it. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to buffered mode, and we're going to start to um, just listen to the distorted sound, you know, the, the, uh, the gained up sound of the three pedals. And again, this box is going to be real useful because it's going to allow us to do that in real time. So um, before uh, we started uh, filming and recording, um, we just kind of reached a consensus as to, you know, settings on the three that we thought were very, very similar in terms of level and tonal response. And uh, so I'm just going to turn all three of these on. And uh, we're just going to start going back and forth. And what I'll do is when I switch, I will, uh, I'll just point at which pedal is, uh, is, is in line. And uh, you, know, you guys can draw your own conclusions. OK, here we go.
You know, uh, we, the four of us kind of agree that uh, this one has an ever so slightly different presentation than mids. It's not dramatic, um, but we all hear it. Uh, it's just, just an anomaly, not a big thing. We could probably dial it almost all the way out. You know, I don't think we can dial it completely out. Um, exact same circuit under the hood, all three of them, with the exception, of course, of the addition of the true bypass capability for the KTR. Um, you know, okay, component variation is a fact of life. Uh, I built uh, about 8,000 Centaurs over the years of 15 years of Centaur production and listened to each and every one of those boards twice as a bare board on my testing jig and hopefully you'll get a chance to see my testing jig a little later on in this video um, and also as a finished unit once it got built into a, a casting with all the, all the goodies and so on. And um, so, you know, I'm here to tell you that having listened to 16,000 production boards or production boards 16,000 times, plus all the other listening I've done over the years. You know, they are, there's a range of variation. Obviously, you always want to minimize that range of variation, and I worked very hard to minimize that range of variation, but you're never going to completely eliminate it. So it doesn't surprise me, and I'm not appalled or anything uh, along those lines, that this one sounds ever so slightly different. You know, it's just a fact of life. So please try not to freak out. I've had three or four in here, and they all had their own little personality, you know, within that small variance. But yeah. They're all, they're all... It's the same pedal. The same pedal. Yeah, exactly. So, um, what we're going to do now, I guess, that was the dirty sound, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Clean Boost for all of them. I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to go to the Bypass uh, uh, position on the, on the switching box, and basically... Just minimize the gain on all three for clean boost mode. I'm just going to go ahead and put treble at noon for all three. And um, an easy way to do it, just in terms of level, is uh, just have the uh, the output of all three at noon as well. And so this basically is going to be um, a representation of clean boost. So I'm going to turn all three of them back on. And we are in bypass uh, position on the on the switching box.
that must have been truly enthralling, but uh, it um, served a purpose, I think. So um, we listened to three of them in clean boost mode, and we listened to them uh, gained up some. Hopefully the difference is, uh, well, I mean, you know, they're pretty minimal. Oh, yeah. But uh, in any case, uh, we should try some of this stuff with a single coil guitar, shouldn't we? Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, keep filming, and uh, Taylor's just going to unplug. Should I hit the standby on the app? So what do you think, Linhoff or? Uh... Uh, the Linhoff. Yeah. Uh, why don't we start on, um, this is in the bypass position for the switch, uh, the switching box. So this is just, uh, again, uh, guitar to box, box straight to amp. Um, and just go ahead and strum a few. <laughs> Okay, so um, we'll just do off position for the three. The KTR will be in buffered mode. And uh, again, exactly the same uh, as, uh, as what we had in, in the bypass position, except for you know, the additional cable capacitance and whatever other uh, you know, nonlinearity and signal loss you get with these cheap ass uh, one footers. So we'll go back and forth between these uh, in the off position and then um, We'll uh, do buffer versus true bypass with this. Okay, so that's these three in the off position, again, KTR and buffered mode. Uh, now we're going to go back and forth between buffered and true bypass. So I'm going to go to the B position here, which is that. Again, the, uh, the cab of the amp is out in the recording room, and we're just listening at a very, very low level uh, on Taylor's monitors, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on out there, but um, in theory, the, uh, be able to hear it. Yeah, the difference should be much more apparent out there in front of the amp than it is in here. So we'll do that again real quick. Sometimes the, uh, the difference, um, I don't know, sometimes true bypass can sound a little warmer and rounder, and that's not because of anything uh, that the buffer is adding. The buffer basically is, is adding up high. It's basically the buffer is preventing high frequency content from essentially being subtracted from your signal um, via cable capacitance. So um, the buffer basically gives you the most verite presentation of this signal that's originally coming out of the guitar. And, um, you know, maybe some people, if, if you're used to, you know, a more or less true bypass setup, you know, a fairly elaborate pedal board with uh, all true bypass pedals, it could well be that you're not really used to hearing, you know, what that original signal really and truly is, what's really and truly going out of the amp, or, or sorry, coming out of the guitar and going into the amp. But uh, um, I've always been a believer in, you know, just kind of getting everything that it's possible to get coming out of the guitar. And if you want to do some frequency response shaping downstream, you go ahead and do that. But to lop it all off at the beginning, um, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So uh, should we go ahead and, um, why don't we uh, go ahead and do true bypass, not true bypass, uh, um, clean boost. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do some clean boost yeah, and, uh, and see what we get. What is it? What's the guitar sound like in the neck position? 
You know you're, you know you're familiar with uh, the Centaur, having had one for a number of years, and obviously you're familiar with this guitar in a way that I just can't be. So why don't you go ahead if you were to uh, want to dial in a group of settings to get something cool, you know, whatever position you want to be sure. in on the guitar. Why don't you just lean down, do it on that one, and I'll try and replicate it on the other two. Sure. like something about the same, not quite 130 on these two. So noon, a little after, 115 and 115. Let's see what we got. All right, we're gonna go bypass again. That's the three of them uh, adding, adding some dirt. Um, what else should we do, if anything? Oh, um, do a strat. Sure. That's like kind of covers the three 
basic group groups. Group groups, yeah. Should I use the Callahan or the standard strat? Callahan's cooler, but the standard strat would be more like what most people have. Why don't you do that? Yeah, yeah sure. Like, All right, that's cool. Just, it just really bugs me when people do demos like, out of tune really badly. <laughs> Okay, so uh, um, so now it's strat time. We're gonna okay. try and give a, just a few different representations with a few different guitars I have that are kind of similar to what people have, I guess, out there. And uh, this is just a standard American Stratocaster, nothing fancy. Um, the only thing that I've changed is I've put a Callahan bridge um, and the uh, Lindy Fralin uh, special wines for, that uh, he makes for Bill Callahan. And the uh, wiring is all standard and everything. Um, I use standard, uh, I guess, 10 through, 10 through 52s, which are kind of standard strings. But uh, so this is uh, this is just a strap on the bridge pickup. Everything kind of wide open. This is the bypass string. something uh, where we get the gain remember uh, we tried it some months ago where we got the gain way the hell up uh, and um, I can't remember whether there's a strat I think it was because I don't think you're less in the studio so you uh, basically gain up maybe back the treble off quite a bit and um, this is I think a kind of where I set mine for a song I do called rendezvous <laughs> set my amp a little gainier than this guy. Okay. So like, Maybe try chords or chords. Is this the one? Which one is on? Not on that pedal. Yeah, that's it. That's game. No, you're, you're not on that pedal. Oh. Not, we're not on that pedal. <laughs> that, as they say, that may make a difference. Hang on. Like it's there we are. It's not performing like a...
guitars um we've done the true bypass versus buffer thing we've done clean boost we've done adding some dirt sound great on everything i think we uh i think we got most of it so um there is one other thing i want to do and uh so exactly let me think where is that i know where it is i know it's right here <laughs> 